So early on in this series, I mentioned the need to have dynamic flexibility when it comes to the monsters and the NPCs in Vicious Legacy. In the same way that the monsters and locations and stories are generated from the ground up, I need the world and those within it to be able to react dynamically to that information, or that information changing suddenly, especially with the monsters. So the question becomes, how do we make monsters behave differently in accordance to their traits, memories, backstories, and their current situation? Well, as it happens, Hey, old man, give me everything. Oh, oh, call an ambulance, call an ambulance, but not for me. With extreme difficulty. We are back. Welcome to 2025 and the first of many Vicious Legacy devlogs. I don't really have anything else to say that I didn't already say in the 2024 channel update, so if you haven't seen that, pause, have a coffee, go watch that, come back. Cool. Let's get into it. So it took me a while to settle on what I wanted this video to be about, but also what I wanted to work on next with the game itself. The last devlog from <laughs> six months ago uh, introduced my lore generation system, Archivist, and though that was only part one of probably several, I couldn't quite bring myself to do part two just yet. A lot of the work is done, but during my break from making videos, I realized that I really wanted to pull it back and focus on the core gameplay. You win this round, people who comment that every single video, but the war isn't over. Archivist is really exciting, but can't really have much bearing on the game currently, as we don't really have any AI smart enough to be receptive to it. We have stats, a story, and snippets of what we could have down the line, but the monster has no notion of any of it, for example. Old Leggy Boy here is still just wandering around, picking random locations to move to, and, you know, maybe running after the player if they get close enough. But he has no desires, no goals, no thoughts, no personality. Part of me wanted to do a combat rework for this video, or a hunting loop, or something player related, but I realized that no matter what path I approached, without the appropriate behavior of the monster to feed back against, there was no real point implementing the player's loop. And so we had our answer. We needed to relook at NPC behavior. I mentioned in a previous video about refactoring my NPC logic into state machines. I just learned about the pattern and I was excited to see how much more powerful it was in the face of my previously uh, enthusiastic yet unstructured and naive approach. However, that was all well and good when it came to the simple logic I had in place. Move here, move there, chase player, look for player, and go back to moving here and there. It's all very simple, and a state machine works best with simple, predictable logic. But similar to the animator in Unity, once you start adding more and more states, it starts to very quickly become tangled. You find each state starts needing to know about the other states in order to accommodate for different transitions, and before long, the point of separating out the logic into states is almost lost because of all the different connections that you need to make it make sense anyway. So, then I looked one step further from that, into something called behavior trees. Behavior trees are more like organized, flexible, priority-based state machines. You have a node, which might be an action, and out of that node you have different branches which lead to different actions, and other nodes that are constantly performing evaluations. Actions have priorities and can be a lot more flexible than a state machine. Each action doesn't need to know about the others or transitioning, just what can or can't happen next based on the data. Each action just performs its thing and then moves on. Still, a behavior tree needs explicit structuring on how to get from one task to another and when. If this, then this. If this, then this. It looked promising and I actually started developing one, but still, very quickly I realized that it becomes hard to maintain and expand. Adding and removing states becomes easier, but still the overhead to manage the sequences gets more intense as the complexity of the behavior increases, and I still found myself having to handhold the different behaviors. So I was going back and forth on this for a little while and jumping between state machines and behavior trees and getting kind of frustrated because I couldn't seem to find a nice dynamic way of handling this. Then I found my answer. What is GOPE? Aside from being really fun to say, GOPE stands for Goal Oriented Action Planning. It's a powerful architecture designed by Jeff Orkin in the early 2000s whilst working on AI for Fear. Um, he released a really awesome paper on it. You can go read that link in the description. But basically the idea, instead of specifying each step an NPC should take, you give the agent a bunch of beliefs about itself and the world around it a bunch of potential actions and some overall goals to achieve. And then an algorithm looks at all of that 
works backwards from the goal and sorts those actions and comes up with a possible plan in order to try and achieve those goals. Think of GOAT like planning a camping trip. You have the goal, set up camp, make dinner. And to get there, you work backwards to figure out what steps are needed. A GOAT system understands that actions have requirements. We call these preconditions and results. We call these effects. So let's say you're camping and your goal is have dinner ready. A GOAT system will think backwards like this. To have dinner ready, I need to cook soup. To cook soup, I need a fire and ingredients. To have a fire, I need firewood. To have firewood, I need to find and chop some firewood and so on until eventually they reach the first step that they have to take in order for that whole sequence to make sense. The cool part is that GOAP can adapt as situations change. Oh, there's no food I can cook? Okay, I better go and buy some food. Oh, I don't have any money? All right, let's look at my stats and see if I can try to steal something. Each action in GOAP also has a cost, like how chopping firewood takes more energy than picking up some pre-cut wood. The system tries to find not just any path to the goal, but the most efficient one available. And of course, there are downsides to any behavior system. And the one for GOP is that whilst GOP is great at thinking ahead and coming up with an overall behavior and plan, it struggles with the moment to moment actions during each state. One way I've seen this phrased, which I think really helps, is that GOP is a brilliant strategist, but a horrible tactician. But we'll get back to that later. Another downside is the overhead. The more complex a GOP system, the more calculations are being run simultaneously and the more overhead it creates. If I want to have multiple enemies all running this system at the same time and other NPCs, probably I would run into a bunch of issues very quickly. But because Vicious Legacy itself is focusing on these kind of one-on-one -on -one combat situations, these strategic duels, I think relying on GOP for the core behavior of these monsters makes perfect sense. I wouldn't be using this for most of the NPCs or for the random mobs or animals within the world because they don't need it. But the monsters, they need it. Just quickly, this is the first in a series of announced videos in a schedule which I've uploaded to the Patreon. Uh, you don't need to be a paid member to see it, you just jump in. But if you feel a desire to contribute to me or my work, I'd be very grateful. There's a link below in the description. This video was really only made possible by the people who are already contributing, so thank you so much. Alright, back to it. So I've built an initial implementation with the help of Git amends video here, which is just incredible. And then I've run with it and modified it to suit my needs. It has really good videos and advanced programming concepts and game design. I highly recommend you check them out. In our case, I'm using the GOP system, which acts as an overarching behavior pattern of the monsters and their beliefs and tying their history and stats to their actions. Things like, am I nocturnal? What do I do during the day? Where do I sleep? Am I hungry? How aggressive am I? Do I have any injuries? Have I been here before? These kinds of beliefs about the world can change over time and tie in perfectly with archivists. Take our monster. I first wanted to transfer over what behavior I already had set up and recreate it with this new system. So first, moving around. First, we give it a very simple belief about itself. Are we moving, right? Simple enough. Then I give them a simple action, relax. Stand there and do nothing, which makes that belief false. We aren't moving. And then I add another action to wander around aimlessly with the precondition that we were already doing nothing. There's no point deciding to wander around when we're already wandering around. Finally, I add the simple goal of walking around with the desired end effect to be the belief that we're moving around. We hit play and the planner makes a plan working backwards from the goal. In order to walk the goal, we need to do the walk action, which requires us to have been doing nothing. So first, make us do nothing, then make us walk. Simple. Our monster walks around, then chills out, and walks around and chills out, and that's its life. Now, to add more behavior, we just add more beliefs and actions and goals. For something more complex, I wanted the monster to look for food, because we have stats, we have hunger meters and stamina and all this sort of stuff that's working in the background already. So again, I made beliefs for hunger and tied them directly to our generated stats for known locations of food and the town, and sensor beliefs which we can use to detect other objects like food or the player. This time more actions. The monster can either look for food or goes to the last visited food source, which is cheaper. And if it gets really desperate, it can go to town and hunt a villager. The goal, stay healthy, which has a higher priority than the other goal of doing nothing. So once the agent believes that it's no longer healthy, which will happen when the desired effect of not being hungry is false, the goal is carried out before the original one. The planner now has more ways that it can form plans. Plans can also be interrupted or time out. If looking for food is taking too long, we can try something else. As the hunger of the monster drops, eventually it will believe that it's hungry. If it believes that it has found a food source before, which is likely, it will go to that, assuming it's not too far away. 
it will think that that's a cheaper action because it doesn't need to search for food. If we haven't found any food recently, or the food is really far away, it might decide to look for food, in which case it will walk around until one of our sensors picks up some nearby food. Then it will go there and it will eat. Observe as the humble leggy boy makes his way over to the paralyzed deer that was slain only moments before and feasts. <laughs> if we don't have a recent location and we're walking around for ages and we haven't found any food, eventually, depending on its level of aggression, the monster will head into town and search for something a little more blue. And very quickly we get this sort of interesting behavior where it's making decisions and it's changing based on the situation. In this way I hope you can see how easy it is to form complex behavior from layering of simple actions, beliefs, and goals. If we decide we want it to consider something else along the way, we just add another element. I know some of you are thinking, well, I'm sure it's not that easy, and you're right. It's an absolute pain to debug which is why I wrote these little custom UI windows. This really isn't the best way to do it. I'm sure probably an editor extension would be, but um, I wanted to do it this way so that I could easily record and show you what's happening. On a side note, I actually took the time here to redo the damage calculations from the procedural combat video and make it all work with the system and actually tie it in specifically to the monster's health and then do a UI health bar to show that. So the GOP system and the damage are all pulling from the same stats. There's no hardwired localized information being used. So it's all using the same system, which is nice and neat. I'm also using tons of debug logs. And sometimes the bug you're chasing isn't even a bug. In an early test, where I hadn't even really fully understood the desired effects of the goals, I made another goal to face the player and play a wave animation. The outcome I set to be nothing, just like being idle, because I thought, well, I don't really want any outcome other than just playing the emote. But when I ran the script, the planner saw that it could either wave or do nothing, and both had the desired outcome of doing nothing. And since nothing was cheaper than waving, it just stood there. This kind of unexpected behavior pops up a lot and can be really interesting, but also really frustrating. Another case I ran into was with this desire to keep distance from town. I wanted monsters to sort of be skittish, so maybe smaller monsters will keep their distance, but bigger ones will be braver and head in. And an interesting thing popped up with the relation between this need to keep away from town and how it related to searching for food. So I had a priority for staying healthy and it became a higher priority the hungrier the monster was until it became desperate enough to enter town and look for food, ignoring its initial instincts to stay away from town. In my mind, the monster would stay away from town as per the original goal, then become desperate, overcome their instincts, go into town, eat some food until they were happy, and then leave the town again when they were no longer desperate for food. But I think as some of you can probably guess, what happened is that it would go into town, start to eat. As it's eating, eating becomes less of a priority, so immediately it began running away from town, only to become desperate for food again, only to be afraid again, only to be hungry again. And it created this cycle of constantly leaving and entering town, where the monster would just sort of flick back and forth between these two states. It made sense logically, but it wasn't what I intended. In the end, the solution was to have the goals keep the same priority, but only change the costs of the actions dynamically, as the actions would only be interrupted for a higher priority goal. When the two goals have the same priority, the planner will look at what the cheapest actions are. So I would just make it that as you became hungrier, the ability to go look for food became cheaper than the ability to stay away from town. So that way it would eat until it's full, then reevaluate rather than immediately running away for a higher priority goal. So there's a lot of getting your head around how to reach a desired behavior and how the system thinks. Uh, yeah, then we also have this. Why are you running? Which is just terrifying. Now, this ties back to what I mentioned before about GOAT being unreliable and not scalable when handling complex sequential behavior. For example, combat. In this example, I've made a higher priority goal, chase and attack the player, as well as very simple chase and attack actions, which are triggered when the player is within range. But that's it. It's what we had before, but it, that's really about the extent of it unless we want to get really complicated really quickly. Gope isn't really equipped to handle something like fast paced decisions like something you would find in combat. If I were to try and micromanage quick paced lower level decisions like when to dodge, when to attack, what attack to use, when to use abilities, it would get very complex very fast and probably be impossible to debug. This is where pairing Gope with other systems can create really interesting results. 
Instead of trying to handle combat or any other isolated interaction system through GOPE, it's better to instead have the GOPE actions trigger an external system through a command pattern, let's say, to then run the further calculations and handle everything on its own. GOPE can handle the broader actions like chasing an enemy, entering into combat, exiting combat, retreating or flanking, and these more sort of strategic decisions. But I'll be using a state machine to handle the individual actions of combat itself. When to dodge, when to attack, what attack to use, when to use different abilities, and importantly, when to hand the reins back over to the GOPE system. This overlap of systems is where I think a lot of people go wrong with something like GOPE. I've seen a lot of negativity online uh, mentioning the drawbacks, but only really looking at the system in isolation, in a bubble. But in conjunction with other dedicated systems, I think that's where GOPE really thrives and can be extremely powerful. Obviously, this is still a base level implementation. Ideally, I'd be separating out these beliefs, actions, and goals into something like scriptable objects that I can form into lists uh, that have their own preconditions that are checked before setting them up in the first place. That way, only certain types of monsters could even evaluate certain goals or actions. There's a great GDC talk on Gope and how it's used for the orc behavior in Shadow of Mordor, and I think a great point that they make is to reduce the options for your Gope system as much as possible. If something can be handled by a lower level system, like head tracking, do it through a head tracking system. Don't run it through Gope and take up unnecessary resources. Same for something like keeping redundant actions in, or having them exit out straight away if the action conditions aren't met. If the conditions aren't ever going to be met by the agent, then get them out of the list. Even the beliefs, if you have a bunch of individual bull checks, consider turning the ones that won't ever happen at the same time into an enum, and just treat them as the states of the same variable. I have a long way to go still in creating and maintaining the system and the behavior it makes for the monsters, but I'm very happy with the results so far. The groundwork is there, and really it's just about layering beliefs and actions, keeping it nice and scalable, and then implementing the other systems. So between videos, I can just add more and more. Now that I have a solid foundation for the behavior of the monsters, I can start expanding in other areas of gameplay that involves interacting with the monsters. After all, this is the core loop of the game. Throughout the last year, my methodology has pivoted more and more towards find the fun over every other development goal. That's why I didn't want to do a part two to Archivist because it's sick and I think it's very interesting, but it's not the core fun of the game, it's supplementary. The fun in this case is in different places, but mainly in fighting interesting dynamic monsters. It's a monster hunting game. So next video, I've got a couple of options rattling around in my head, including maybe a combat overhaul or a hunting mechanic for the player, searching for clues and uh, that sort of stuff. So we'll see. But it won't just be up to me. Fellow developer tiers on Patreon and higher will be given access to voting on the next devlogs content and other features for the game. So we shall see. But I will eventually be doing another video on Archivist and expanding on that. Thank you so much for all your support so far, both on here, on Discord, and of course on the Patreon. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. I'm so glad to be back. Let me know any thoughts, questions, queries, quabbles in the comments. Lastly, a fellow dev and friend of mine who was also affected by the recent layoffs has just started her journey into content creation on YouTube as well. So if you want some chill vlogs and some game content, definitely go check it out at the link below. And as always, be good, and I'll see you in the next one. estate.